Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to try something completely different. Uh, I've had a lot of demand in the past on past videos to do some coding examples, and I do have a lot of coding videos. But uh, in those videos, I typically have all the code written out, and the video is more me going through the code and talking about the highlights and how the code works. So I thought today we'd do something different. We would do some live coding. So today's topic will be the Monte Carlo simulation. We had a more theoretical video on that, which I'll link in the description below. But today we'll be looking through another problem and we'll be writing the code from scratch. So you get to see and hear my thought process as well as see all the mistakes I make in real time. So this is gonna be called the running problem and it's loosely based on my own life. And the problem goes as follows. So every morning there's some temperature and let's say the temperature is uniformly distributed between 40 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now every morning you also have a tolerance and that tolerance is normally distributed with mean 55 degrees Fahrenheit and five degrees Fahrenheit standard deviation. And the way these two things interact is if the temperature on a given day is bigger than your tolerance, then you're going to go for a run. Otherwise you're gonna stay home because it's too cold. And if you do choose to go for a run, then the number of calories you burn is exponentially distributed with mean 200 calories. So there's three factors at play here. There's a daily temperature, which is uniformly distributed. There is a daily tolerance, which is normally distributed, and there is a calories burned, which is exponentially distributed if you do choose to go for a run, and it's zero if you don't. Okay, and the question is, what is the average number of calories that you burn on any given day if this is the way the world works? Uh, now, before we go into the code, let's quickly think about how would we solve this if we weren't using Monte Carlo simulation, and you'd have to do some I think pretty tricky math. I think it's not too bad. It's doable. I didn't do it myself, but you'd have to do something like uh, check if the uniform distribution is above the normal distribution with these particular parameters. And then if it is, then you need to sample from the exponential distribution. Otherwise, it's zero. So there are a lot of moving parts going on. And so this is a great candidate to use the Monte Carlo simulation. So let's hop over to the code and see if we can code this. All right, so we've got the code here, and so far all I've got is the import. So we're importing NumPy as NP to do uh, list and numerical operations. We have matplotlib to draw plots for us, and we have time because we wanna see how long our code is gonna take at various points. So let's get into it. I'm kinda nervous, I don't know about you. I've never done live coding on this channel, so hopefully this goes well. Um, so I think what I wanna do first is write a helper function because the way the general thought process I'm going to go about it is that we want to simulate a bunch of days as many as we can reasonably and we want to write a helper function that's going to tell us how many calories you burn on any given simulated day so let's do that first so we'll do write a function called get calories burn and instead of hard coding the numbers in let's make the numbers flexible just in case in the future we want to change these numbers at all so we'll say lower temperature, upper temperature. So these two are the lower and upper temperature of the uniform distribution. So for us, that was 40 and 60, if I recall correctly. We also have average uh, tolerance. We have standard deviation of tolerance and we have average calories burned. Okay, so we have all these parameters and let's just get the temperature first. So we're gonna sample the temperature from the uniform distribution, so NP dot random.uniform, and we put the lower put the lower and upper temperatures in here. So this is gonna give us the temperature. I'll also comment this as we go. So get the temperature. And then let's get the threshold next. Seems like the natural next thing to do. So we're gonna get the threshold. So thresh is equal to, or you know what? We called it tolerance, right? So get the tolerance. So tall is equal to NP dot random dot, and this came from the normal distribution with mean uh, 55, which was the average tall and SD tall. So now we have the temperature on the given day and we have our tolerance on the given day. And if the temperature is higher than the tolerance, so I'll write a comment here. If the temperature is higher than our tolerance, then run. So if temp is greater than tall, then we're gonna go for a run, which means we're going to sample the number of calories we burn from the exponential distribution. So cals is going to be np.random.exponential, yep, with a parameter average 
calories burned. And then we're going to here return, you know what? And then let's put here else cals is equal to zero. So this is basically saying if the temperature is high enough above our tolerance, then we're going to sample from the exponential distribution with uh, parameter 200. And if the temperature is not, then we don't go for a run. So therefore our calories is zero. We just stayed home and did nothing. And then at the end of the day, we're going to return cals. So that is that. And let's make sure the function works before we write the whole Monte Carlo method. Let's put in the real numbers. So this was 40, this was 60, this was 55, this was five, and this was 200. So we got zero, we got something positive, we got something positive, we got something positive, zero. Okay, um, I wouldn't say it's proven that it's working, but it seems like it is working. So now we're going to write the actual Monte Carlo simulation. So we're gonna say num days, let's start with something small and see if it takes too long. So let's say we're gonna sample or simulate 10,000 days of this process. So we're gonna say uh, for blank in range num days. If you guys didn't know, you can put this underscore in a for loop if you don't want to explicitly assign a variable, if you don't wanna use that variable at all, for example. So that's what I'm doing. Let me also initialize a list, which is going to, um, we're gonna build it up. That's gonna be how many calories you burn on any of these days. So we're gonna call this daily calories, an empty list. For each day, we simply just call our helper function here. So let's, I wish I didn't delete that call, but it's okay. So this is gonna be cals is equal to, again, 40, 60, 55, five, 200. So we get the number of calories we burn today, and we simply just throw it into the list. So uh, daily calories, dot append cals. And let's also put a start and end timer so we can see how long this is taking. So we can say start is equal to time, and we can put end is equal to time, and we can print end minus start. That'll tell me how many seconds it took. So it was pretty quick. And let's uh, draw a histogram of all of the calories we burn. So we can do plt.hist, and we just throw in daily calories into here. And we've got this kind of histogram. Let's also figure out what the mean is, because at the end of the day, our goal was to figure out the average calories burned. So let's do plt.title uh, is np.mean of this guy. So we see on average, you burn about 55 calories if these are all the parameters. So we've answered the question. Um, a follow-up question I have is, it looks like there's a huge spike at zero. What percentage of the days do you stay at home and don't burn anything? That's a question that I have. So let's figure that out by doing uh, print i for i in daily calories if i is equal to zero. Oops, and I want the length of that. So 7,267 days out of, and let's divide that number. This might not be the cleanest way to do this, but hopefully you understand what I'm doing. I'm getting all of the days where you burn zero calories, and I'm gonna divide that by num days total. That'll give me the fraction of days where I burn zero calories. So around 73% of the days, I just sit at home and do nothing. So that's also interesting to know. Um, so technically we're done. I mean, this was a very quick way to do a Monte Carlo simulation. But the thing that's gnawing at my head right now is that this seems inefficient. For example, let me scale this up to a million. So now it's, is that six zeros? One, two, three, yeah. So if I run this, maybe I'll even speed this part up if it's taking way too long. Okay, so we're back. That did indeed take a while. So if we had a million samples, so if we wanna do a million simulated days, that actually took around 19 seconds. So personally, I don't think that's too fast. And the big reason that this is not efficient is because of this for loop. So you notice that we are doing a million calls to this function up here that we wrote. And so I wonder if there's a way that we can get this to run faster. And I think there is using this cool technique called vectorization. So let me explain that down here. And we can always check this works because we have these answers from before. So we can, um, if I just run these again, we see again 54 and around 73%. So we're gonna make sure that using the efficient way we can still get these answers. So if I do efficient method vectorization, um, what we're gonna do, instead of asking for the days one by one, we're just gonna compute 
all of the temperatures and all of the thresholds and all of the calories burned at once instead of uh, asking for a one by one. So what I'll do is say first, the temps is going to be np.random.uniform. And again, it's between 40 and 60. So instead of asking for one daily temperature, I'm going to ask for all 1 million of them at the same time. And that'll just be another argument you put into your function here. Similarly, I'll get all the tolerances. So I'll say tolls is equal to np.random.normal, 55, 5, and num days. And I'll say that, uh, let me call this the same thing, daily calories. Daily calories is going to be equal to uh, np.random.exponential with parameter 200 and also num days. And the last thing I'm gonna do is daily calories where the temps is less than the tolerance. So to explain what I did, you know what, let me just comment as I explain. So we're gonna get all temps at once. So we're gonna get a million temperatures. That's gonna represent the temperature on every given day. We get all the tolerances at once. So same thing there. And then we get all the all the calories at once. And the only thing we need to do now is any of the positions where the temperature was less than the tolerance, where we would have stayed home, we're going to set those calories to be zero so that we're still obeying the rules of this problem. So we're gonna say, if temp is less, okay, so if temp is less than tall, then you didn't run and it's equal to zero. So that runs. Seems pretty fast. You know what, let me put the start and end timers there as well. So start and end. And grab the end timer. We're gonna print end minus start. So just, oops. Remember before this process of getting a million samples took around 18 to 19 seconds. And now if we do the same thing, it takes only 0.2 seconds. So although this uh, video was about the Monte Carlo simulation, uh, it's kind of also about the fact that you can code things really efficiently if you keep this idea of vectorization in mind. And let's confirm that we're getting the same answer. So let me again put this histogram of daily calories. Uh, the average is 54, whereas before the average was also 54. So we got the correct average. The histograms look identical. And we can do a last check by just printing out the number. Yeah, so 73% as well. So uh, two ways to do the Monte Carlo simulation for the same problem. Um, so hopefully in this video, you just learned how to code a Monte Carlo simulation from scratch for this problem that I just made up um, and also how to do it efficiently. So uh, most of all, if you like this format, please let me know in the comments below because that's going to help me figure out if I should keep doing this format. Um, if you didn't like it, that's also good feedback. Or if there's just something you would like to see me change about it, that's also good feedback. All right. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and uh, see you later.